about uh, Bally Sente. Um, yeah. our first, I think this is our first panel just for Bally Sente. Along with this, we also have a, a great selection, I think, of games from Bally Sente in that time frame. Um, don't forget to check them out before and after you get here. Uh, what I'd like to do is introduce our very significant uh, panelists here. There's uh, Roger Hector, who is the uh, founder president, and uh, Owen Rubin, who is a programmer and actor, programmer, and Bob Smith, Gordon um, yeah. Moonquake, Jim Turner, who uh, worked on Shrek's um, Adventure, and Pablo, who I know who worked, worked, on on worked, on <laughs> worked on everything. Little Paul. Worked on everything. Worked on everything. Who is missing is Howard Delman, who uh, was uh, uh, had previous engagements for this weekend, um, and he wishes he could be here, um, but he says, well, welcome as well. If it wasn't for him, the harbor would have been created and invented, and also for some of his help this year, we would have had uh, quite the selection of games there in the, in the main show. So uh, I'd like to uh, proceed with uh, the, the Valley Center panel. Roger. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I want to thank you guys, actually, for having us here. I think, uh, you know, since uh, Sente existed back in the 80s, uh, this is something that uh, seems like the first time we've actually gotten back together. Uh, it's certainly some of the first time I've seen some of the some of our games that are out there, and it's shocking, amazing, and it's a lot of fun. I've had a great time. Um, so anyway, we we didn't know exactly uh, uh, what what people wanted to know about Sente, but uh, I'm going to run through it real quickly. It started with uh, myself. Howard Delman and Ed Rothberg, the three of us, had worked at Atari together. Uh, Howie in hardware engineering and, and Ed, the software programmer, and, and I was in R&D and doing a bunch of other crazy stuff. And the three of us left and started what was Vidia, Vidia Inc. Uh, we'll, I'll speed through this. Vidia uh, existed, our first office building was a uh, building that belonged to Nolan Bushnell. And we all knew Nolan, and so we ran, I, it was a shocking, <laughs> amazing coincidence. But uh, we, we were sort of uh, in, a, in a very visible situation, being able to uh, keep track of each other a lot. And so Vidya started as an independent developer. We were, uh, we set out to create both coin-op and consumer games. We made a couple of consumer cartridges. Uh, we also, as you'll see, embarked on a whole bunch of coin-operated games. And so anyway, it, it went through this circuitous path across a number of years, starting in 81 and kind of uh, going to about 86 or 87, something like that. We started as video, and I'm going to move through it because, let's see, there we go. Um, back in 1983 or 82, something like that. The, uh, you know, this is the initial crew, and we look like a bunch of hippies uh, back in the day. Um, these were, some of these people you might recognize, like uh, this gentleman, this young kid here is that guy, the old guy right there. <laughs> and uh, no, 12. Uh, 12, yeah, yeah. Well, there's, there's a few other distinguished people. Uh, someone who's not here, Donna Bailey, down here at the end. She was the programmer of, uh, of uh, Centipedes. Uh, an early employee of ours, and I don't know who that guy is. He, he lost a lot of weight. And Paul, the guy back here in the corner, he's now our uh, our champion guy. Paul was one of the longest employees, certainly the longest employee in the whole company. Uh, how long? Is it about that long? So anyway, uh, we had some of these shots. Uh, were PR shots back in the day, and I found them in a box. So I just said, hey, it'd be more fun for these guys to see pictures of themselves back in the day. Uh, so these are young guys, kind of a typical Silicon Valley thing. We were set up in Sunnyvale. We had serious meetings, and uh, this is what, a dev, that's what a dev bench looked like back in the day. Uh, this is uh, Ed Rockford and Howie Delman, we referred to just a few minutes ago. Both of them seem to be sleeping. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they're deep in thought. I'm not quite sure. Uh, Dennis Kopel, who isn't here today, but uh, 
certainly much younger back in the day. <laughs> That's true. Still Still Bob doesn't. Labonte, a wonderful artist uh, who did quite a lot. Of, he's the guy that created all of the Pizza Night Theater characters and artwork back at Atari. Uh, we basically brought a lot of people from Atari, very talented folks, that we knew there. And it was, wait a minute. <laughs> Yes, music software. Uh, there's, there's actually working on a hardware. Uh, I was sleeping. He, another, another sleeping. So, so maybe yeah. it's worth mentioning that he's on the Atari 100 because that had a music composing program that Ed Rucker did. No. Oh, you wrote. You we wrote that. Yeah. 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 And it actually played music really well. It was like a 16 channel or something. I still have that keyboard in my garage if somebody wants to try to get it. <laughs> In addition to being a programmer, Lee has been uh, and is currently the, uh, the conductor for the Palo Alto Symphony. Did I get that right? No, you didn't. I think you're right. One of those. He's a big fancy band. Andy, He's a band leader. And he composes. But he, knows, he composes <laughs> symphony music. Uh, anyway, so, and I uh, had to dedicate one special shot. <laughs> okay, to all is, this needs explanation, doesn't it? So, Jim, what did you bring? What, what you, why are you wearing a shirt? Jim, Jim used to be in charge of that machine. And yeah. When Jim left, it got dumped on me because I used to help out keep it running at Atari. And this was a PR for me. He said, come in, you know, nice shirt, and then pretend you're doing something. <laughs> he didn't need to do anything, right? <laughs> At least he's not sleeping. Yeah, in point of fact, yeah, you're the only one awake so far. <laughs> I'm awake. No, I'm not awake. I'm actually asleep. Yeah. It's not the computer that needs explaining why it's the shoes. Yeah. <laughs> oh my they, 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 they actually said blue shoes. They told you what you had to wear on it. Borrowed it's them. the TV antenna on the back of the disk drive. I'm not sure about that. Well, <laughs> this, 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 is what development, this is what development looked like back in the day when you had a computer That's what backs, room. Back 780s. Yes. yes. Uh, and every and all of the offices were plumbed, or at least the programming. Uh, it was the coolest of the building. Yeah, air yeah. conditioning and the uh, allergen systems. That's where the guard trip one day. That's right. The guard system. So, yeah. so the computer room. Hug your phone. Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll move into pictures of uh, uh, the, these are some of the flyers for the first product, the original concept that we were setting out to to uh, produce was called the the Sente system, which was a convertible uh, coin-operated game system, meaning that you could buy one cabinet and then with a series of updated kits uh, uh, and cartridges, you could convert this, this cabinet into a different game. Into that one. Now, these are two different versions. We're talking about the, the Mercedes, and this is sort of the, the Chevy version of the same hardware, but uh, for different, uh, you know, for different types of locations. Did you ever think someone tried to run through all 20, like 20 games in two days? We, we yeah. never anticipated that. You're doing that. <laughs> so you might know, now days. actually it was, it was Nolan Bushnell's idea to build a, uh, a game that anyone, that, that a, a, an orangutan could attack and would survive. Well, so so can this can particular... So yeah. Nolan's concept was he watched the operators, they would get a, hand truck and they'd roll a game, put it in a pickup truck and drive it somewhere. Then they would take that one off and put it down and then grab that game, put it back in the truck and drive it somewhere else. And he thought, well, that was really kind of a silly idea that you kind of lug these games around. So the idea here was you just change the cartridge, a control panel, and the graphic. And it'd be done really fast. There's more to that story. <coughs> I'll get to later. Well, part of this is that uh, this particular cabinet was made of steel and uh, it weighed it weighed four, 405 pounds. Wow. He couldn't load it in the truck. So my friends of mine, I think the people involved in the California Extreme years ago had one of those cabinets that they needed to get rid of and they took three times off the top of a two story building before they had any significant damage. I, well, you I believe it. It. It, was, it, was, it was built. Well, I don't know if it's an urban legend or not, but didn't they test the cabinet? We, we tried to blow them up. We tried to do yeah. all kinds of stuff. Yeah, we basically I think attacked them. Was one of the ways. We, we did all kinds of destructive well, so the, testing. So the weird story of that whole thing was that it did, the operators didn't do that because they no. would hire these guys who knew how to pick up game, move, move game, put down game. Yeah. They didn't know how to put a cartridge in the slot. <laughs> and so they ended up lugging those around anyway. <laughs> well, 
Yes, that, that, yeah. that's a whole story in itself. We were ahead of our time. We were ahead of our time. So <laughs> now at the launch, uh, we have we have the uh, sort of the first launch game. It's called Snake Pit, and there is one out there. I haven't seen one in 30 years, but it works and it looks great. Uh, you can see this cabinet is decked out with the Snake Pit graphics and the Snake Pit control panel. Um, I have a control panel at home. Do you really? Yeah. Well, wow, it's good to know. We're gonna keep going to want to talk to you later. Yeah. Yes. Uh, this was, now we did make many other types of cabinets uh, later, but basically a team hat trick. I thought I'd throw it in here because it also, hat trick was, uh, I think, the biggest revenue generator for, for Sente, it was most popular, and, and we uh, produced it, we programmed it. Yeah, go, go figure. Some other cartridges, these are just flyers from Is other cartridges. The, uh, this guy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, the artist, Bob Clamati, uh, interpreted uh, yeah, me and kind of stuck me on there. But, but um, we also have mini golf out there. I love it. Uh, street football, I don't think we have one of those out there. Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Tomorrow? Yeah. Oh, cool. These are all kits, remember? Yeah, yeah, they're kits. That game was a feature motion picture. Which one? Street football. Street football. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, it was which one? The accused. No. Yeah, but one day, um, Rich Adam called me. He played a pivotal role. He called me and said, Hey, I saw your game on the movie screen. What are you talking about? And it turns out that this pivotal scene in this movie, which I don't think I've ever seen straight through, was with Jodie Foster, and she gets raped in a bar. And, oh, oh, yes. And the, the pivotal scene is where uh, some, some kid is playing a video game and puts his name in and the, the time. And that's, the, that's the pivotal uh, fact uh, which, which uh, changes the case. And, um, and then I remembered back, you came into my office with me and said, hey, we need a mock-up screen of this game, high score screen. And of course, the, back then, the high score screens were three letters and a number. So most of them were three letters and numbers. Everybody in the office, you know. And then the one that we needed for the, for the movie was like a name, the time, the date. And it's kind of ridiculous. Well, I was also quite surprised to see a stomping out there. There you have one out there, I couldn't believe it. This is a very rare game. This was created uh, at Sente, and it was the first game that used a foot control. Uh, there's a matrix of, of switches that sit down on the ground. And, and you wind up, uh, you can play, basically you're stomping bugs on the screen by, but when you see them on the screen, you stomp on them with your feet. Um, this control was the subject of extensive litigation for years and years and years. Uh, Valley Sente uh, got the patent on it, and uh, but it was, gee, Konami and Dance Dance Fever and then Nintendo, and there's all kinds of litigation that took place over copyright infringement or patent infringement on that little device that's created here. Uh, Spiker, I think, didn't, didn't, Rich, didn't Rich Adam do that? Yeah. Yeah. That might be Rich in the flyer, I don't know. No, no, no. no. Well, the girl, we had, to have a, one the we had to have a nice a nice uh, girl in the, in the thing there. Oh, it was Kamara Panuna, too, right? Oh, nice girl. Just kidding. Um, yeah, we're time limited here. The, the, um, uh, here's another configuration, sort of a remake of, uh, of the branding after Valley purchased the company. Long story, and I'll tell it to you over a drink. But you don't want to hear it right now. Uh, and uh, the, the Moonquake game is out there. That's uh, that's Bob's game. Uh, that one's also out there. And we had, I don't really remember how many games we produced. There's over 20 coin op games. And how many, I know. Oh, there was no end no in sight. There was no end in sight. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, Trivial Pursuit, we made a whole series of Trivial Pursuits. We licensed yeah, Trivial Pursuit. Name that tune? Is it over? Probably, I don't know. It's all in there somewhere. So there was just a whole crap ton of games that were created. Oops. But wait. Wait a minute. That was, this was called the SAC one. SAC meaning Sente Arcade Computer. There was also other things that that it came to refer to. But the SAC 2, you named that. Yeah, probably. The SAC 2, we had a very creative team. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.